Number two, the complex order of the universe. During the last 30 years, scientists have discovered that the existence of intelligent life depends upon a complex and delicate balance of initial conditions given in the Big Bang itself. The existence of intelligent life depends upon a conspiracy of initial conditions which must be fine-tuned to a degree that is literally incomprehensible and incalculable. For example, Stephen Hawking has estimated that if the rate of the universe's expansion one second after the Big Bang had been smaller by even one part in a hundred thousand million million, the universe would have recollapsed into a hot fireball. PCW Davies has calculated that in order to be suitable for later star formation, without which planets couldn't exist, the relevant initial conditions must be fine-tuned to a precision of one followed by a thousand billion billion zeros at least. He also estimates that a change in the strength of gravity or of the weak force by only one part in 10 to the 100th power would have prevented a life-permitting universe. Now there are three alternatives for explaining this remarkable fine-tuning of the universe. Natural law, chance, or design. The first alternative holds that the fine-tuning of the universe is physically necessary. But this alternative flies in the face of physics. As Davies explains, there is nothing in present ideas about laws of initial conditions remotely to suggest that their consistency with the laws of physics would imply uniqueness. Far from it. It seems then that the physical universe does not have to be the way it is. It could have been otherwise. And thus the first alternative, natural law, is not very plausible. Well, what about the second alternative, that the fine-tuning is due to chance? The problem with this alternative is that the odds against the fine-tunings occurring by accident are so incomprehensibly great that they cannot be reasonably faced. When you compare the range of possible values which the fundamental quantities uh, permitted by the laws of nature could have taken with the range of life-permitting values, you find that the range of life-permitting values is incomprehensibly small in comparison with the wider range of assumable values. The probability that all the quantities would fall by chance alone into the life-permitting range is vanishingly small. We now know that life-prohibiting universes are vastly more probable than any life-permitting universe like ours. But that brings us to the third alternative, intelligent design. A one-time agnostic, Davies now says, through my scientific work, I have come to believe more and more strongly that the physical universe is put together with an ingenuity so astonishing that I cannot accept it as a brute fact. Similarly, Fred Hoyle remarks, a common sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics. And Robert Jastrow, the head of NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, calls this the most powerful evidence for the existence of God ever to come out of science. We can summarize our reasoning as follows. Premise one, the fine tuning of the initial conditions of the universe is due to either law, chance, or design. Two, it is not due to either law or chance. Three, therefore, it is due to design.